The lamplighting ceremony symbolizes the knowledge, experience, and hope. Lighting a lamp is not just lighting up a flame, but instead it is lighting up a ray of hope and inspiration. Global Conference 2013 on Redefining Education is being released. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. His Holiness Babaji, honored guests, it's my high privilege and great honor to welcome you all to Badu Saab and the conference. Badu Saab has a unique place in history. Its name is synonymous with value-based education, rural education revolution, women's empowerment movement, and it has also a rare distinction of a place where education is given from pre-kindergarten to PhD and beyond on the same campus. So it's very befitting to have this conference on this place. The name is very befitting as well, Redefining Education. I know some of us have traveled long distances, have flown over oceans and crossed the national and international lines and fighting their jet lags, but I'm sure you guys have enough energy to participate in the conference and be, uh, to participate in the conference and make this conference a success. To me, Redefining education sounds like redef redefining Newton's law of motion, but what do I know about education? I'm sure with your experiences and your scholarship, you will be able to find the solution to the propositions which we have in hand here. I welcome you again one more time, and please enjoy your stay here. Thank you system and values, a role model of hundreds of students, an eminent speaker, a person who never notices what has been done, can only see what remains to be done. A very polite, kind, and down-to-earth human being. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about the Honorable Secretary Kalgitha Trust, Dr. Devinder Singh. His Holiness, Honorable Babaji, although he is not physically present here, but his spirit pervades every being here, every brick in this valley of divine peace. Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. Atwal, distinguished Guests from Virginia, USA, Dr. Van Wood, Dr. Gurpreet Singh, other distinguished educationists, Dr. China, Dr. John Bentley, Dr. Manjri Gopal, Dr. Verghese, Mr. Dheeraj Mehrotra, Mr. Ghosh, Ms. Relia, Ms. Kanta, and above all, our most affable Mrs. Neera, who has always been here whenever we summoned her. I also would like to address the heart and soul of the Akal Academies, the brave young ladies who are working in very adverse circumstances in the rural areas. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, our principals and headmistresses of all Akal Academies and Dear students, 
I accord you all a very warm welcome to this valley of divine peace. Most of you have been to this place before, but for the benefit of those who have come here for the first time, may I take a few moments to just briefly inform you about the history of this place. As you must be trudging along the treacherous mountains, you must be wondering why, for God's sake, has this place been chosen to build this marvelous university and this educational institution? Well, the history dates back to almost a hundred years ago when our founding father, Atar Singh Ji, he ordained that a place existed in the Himalayas where many sages and saints have been worshipping on the divine name for many a eon and in this blessed place would emerge an advanced center of learning where in addition to the conventional education students would be imparted spiritual training as well so that they evolve into outstanding human beings both enriched with the latest scientific concepts as well as richer in the heart so that they can use the knowledge thus gained for the benefit of mankind. True to the wishes of his master, his disciple Santeja Singh Ji, he discovered this valley of divine peace 50 years after the master had ordained, that is in 1956. This vision was put forward by Sant Atta Singh Ji in 1906 and in 1956 Santeja Singh Ji discovered this divine place. You can well imagine what it would have been like at that time. It was completely cut off, isolated. The nearest roadhead was Solan or Nahan, both about 70 kilometers away. One had to tread almost three days on foot or a mule back to reach this place and yet by his divine vision the master said that this was the place which would evolve into this higher center of learning and his disciple our present guide mentor saint Baba Iqbal Singh Ji started this mission in 1986 he started the Akal Academy with six students and as the year passed, you see what has happened now. Not only the growth has happened here at Badu Sahib, but based on this experiment, the unique individuals which were being created by this, by this noble mission, many more schools have been ex established in all parts of Punjab, many areas of Haryana, Rajasthan, Uttaranchal, Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan. We now have 121 schools providing outstanding conventional education and meshed with spiritual training catering to the requirements of about 50,000 students. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the mood question, the objective of this organization, of this conference, Redivining Education. We need to ponder on this in the speed with which we are evolving, with which we are growing, with which, with which the knowledge is increasing, and with the advent of information technology, this speed has become breathtaking. Maybe we have lost the direction as to what education is all about. Sant Atar Singh Ji, although he himself had not been to any formal school, yet such was his power, such was his meditation, such was his vision that he established a college for girls in a remote part of 
Punjab at Mastuana in 1904. Such was his magnetic personality, such was his charm, that when the Banaras Hindu University was to be established, Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya thought that its foundation stone should be laid by an evolved saint, a Brahmgyani. So when he looked around, he found that Sant Atta Singh Ji fitted that, that description which he had in mind. So he came all the way from Benares to Sunam, the nearest roadhead where Sant Atta Singh Ji lived at Chima, 20 kilometers away. On alighting from the train, he removed his shoes and walked barefoot 20 kilometers, did his pranam to Sanchi, and then requested him to come to Banaras to lay the foundation stone of Banaras Hindu University. When Sant Teja Singh Ji came to the divine service of Sant Atar Singh Ji, his mentor, Sant Atar Singh Ji, told him that you should go abroad, get the latest knowledge about the advances made in education, and tell the Westerners at the same time that there is something to get from the Orient as well, and that is the spiritual knowledge. He gave the message to be told to the people of the West that where the scientific and conventional knowledge ends, spirituality begins. So when Santeja Singh Ji, he returned after visiting three universities abroad. He had been a student at Cambridge and then he had been to Columbia University at New York and finally he, he got the Masters in Education from Harvard University in 1904. When he returned to the service of his master, Sant Atar Singh Ji, Sant Ji said that Sant Teja Singh Ji, you have come back, have you got the education that you went for? And Sant Ji said, yes, my master, whatever you had directed with your blessings, I have been able to achieve that. Suddenly, on hearing this, Sant Atar Singh Ji, his face became, became red and he said, Pai Teja Singh Ji, you may have got the most coveted degree in the world in education, but in Guru Nanak's school, you would get the degree after you pass the acid test, that if you are sitting in Langar, and someone comes from behind and kicks you from on your back and tells you that you are a wretched person and you are a fool and you are befooling others as well and amidst such a situation, such a scenario not even an iota of hatred comes in your Hello. mind towards that person if you achieve this target only then in Guru Nanak's school would you be considered as successful. Ladies and gentlemen, as far as we at the Kalgida Trust are concerned, those golden words were the one which defined education for us. Yes, we provide the best of scientific education in our schools, but we are very clear in our mind that in case we do not lace this, enrich this, enshrine this scientific education with spiritual training, all this effort would go waste. Therefore, based on, on those divine directions given to us by Sant Atar Singh Ji, these Akal Academies have blossomed. In all these schools, the day begins with prayers to the Almighty, with prayers for the entire mankind, with prayers and humble submissions to the Divine Lord. O oh Lord, 
give us strength so that we are able to feel the pain of the neediest oh lord give us strength so that we can think beyond self oh lord give us the vision so that we develop compassion for the poor for the deprived for the wretched after the children say these prayers they begin their daily routine we hope and we seek your blessings ladies and gentlemen that this humble effort that has begun takes the shape of a giant revolution and all schools in the region in the nation in the world start providing the real education where we teach the children not only skills in amassing wealth not only skills in making profits not only skills to look after their own and family needs but to think beyond to think beyond themselves to think beyond appearances and to think for the betterment of the human race that ladies and gentlemen is the objective i am sure that all of you have gathered here you would ponder on these basic issues we really need to redefine education otherwise this world would become a very dangerous place where each one is trying to step on the other in pursuit of material gains i pray to all, to the almighty to give us all strength so that we can ponder on these issues and bring about changes in education systems so that this coveted and desired breed of children we are able to nurture thank you very much please i once again accord you all a very warm welcome for being here thank you before we become an engineer a scientist or anything else in the world it's important that we become a good human being first thank you so much sir i would like to call upon a dynamic personality the architect of this global conference 2013 a blend of uh, simplicity knowledge and dedication a great educator who never compromises at nothing less than the excellence a major source of inspiration yes ladies and gentlemen i'm talking about none other than the honorable advisor education and health kalgi the trust honorable dr neelam ko i would like to call ma'am on the stage honorable baba ji the spirit and essence behind everything whatever you see here though he is not present here physically today because he's just been uh, back yesterday night from a foreign trip covering usa and europe but his blessings are there with us always and that is the driving force behind everything what is done in this remote corner he would join us tomorrow however on akal academy chunni where we are having a small certificate ceremony for the passing graduates those who have completed their two years certificate program in collaboration with the helga todd foundation the team of uh, helga todd foundation mr ram todd please would you stand up and uh, he is there with us who is who is very passionate about one thing that is teachers training so he has taken this venture of training the teachers and the continent which he has selected is asia and africa and hopefully and fortunately we were the first one to get associated with him and along with him we have his team of uh, teachers and master trainers and i would also request them also to stand and uh, that is jocelyn yes jocelyn please she was the first master trainer we had in this program 
and along with that we have uh, Tom and Natalia from Cambridge University. They come here every summer for They come here every summer for six months and uh, volunteer here in Badu Sahib. And that's one thing which I wanted to share with you. Whenever they come to Badu Sahib, they feel that maybe Badu Sahib has a lot of facilities and the infrastructure. So they feel it's better to volunteer in rural Punjab. And you would be surprised to know that whenever they are here, they try to cover all of our academies so that they undertake the visits, see what's happening in our academies and how can they help there. And then the backbone of this program of the Cambridge uh, teachers training, we have Kate Morse from Faculty of Cambridge Education. She's the architect of this program. Thank you very much, everyone. The only thing which we have learned from these people is whenever they come here for four months or six months or six weeks, only thing they do is they land from Delhi International Airport, spend their time here and go back straight. No sightseeing, nothing else, one purpose, one aim. So this becomes our driving force that there are people who want to reach out to the people who have no opportunity or less opportunity. Thank you very much for being here today. Coming back to the, the theme of the conference. As already briefly explained, so we are into rural education, so we thought we must keep this as one segment because as Babaji's vision that he wants no village left behind, no child left behind. So we are trying to touch almost every village, be it Rajasthan, be it Haryana, be it anywhere. So we don't see, we don't plan in fact. There is no strategic planning. Wherever we get the land, where we, wherever we get the opportunity, we go there and start delivering. And for this to happen, we have our the headmistresses and the principals who take this call. And I would also request them to please stand up. And so these are the brave women. <laughs> because to talk here on the stage is very different, but to face the challenges which they have in those deep rural pockets where the timings of the school is 8 to 4 and we complete the homework of the students. They don't carry the bags there and these ladies almost spend about 12 hours every day for almost 10 to 11 months in a year. Second is the pedagogy, the second segment of our conference because the education is incomplete until unless you do not have the methodology of teaching. So we thought we must incorporate that as the second segment. And third is the technology. Technology is, as all of you know here, the eminent people. I am a very small fry in front of all of you. But uh, keeping in mind the need so we have tried to cover all of our 121 academies by imparting education through the technology so that we have now technology in a 1,000 school, uh, the classrooms across all 121 academy. And the last segment is the global school culture and the international mindedness. And that is what Guru Nanak always professed and said that create a human breed who can see and feel the pain of others to have the global citizens so that means to see all in everyone and relate to them and one in all so these are the four segments in which we are going to talk today listen to you all people and thank you once again for being here <clears throat>